Welcome back to Vampire. We've reached the East End docks down here beneath the hospital. First thing I want to hit up is the pharmacy over here so we can hopefully do the missing ingredients quest. If you remember, one of the doctors, one of the more uh, one of the ones interested in blood transfusions and the one who seems to be the adoring fan of Jonathan um, back at the hospital, they wanted some ingredients. And then after that, we will head to Sean Hampton for the main quest. Safer places to be than here. Easy does it, boys. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, something, something's wrong. Whoa. Holy hell. Something about the movement is weird, but I'll, I'll figure it out after I fight them, I suppose. Jesus Christ. There we go. Yeah, that was weird. Um, let me collect everything. I think I accidentally pressed the B button, which turns me into walking mode. And I wasn't, like, I was pretty sure I was going slower than I should, but it's hard to tell because I was in combat. I'm not sure if the speed changes when you're in combat. Yeah, walking, running, okay. We're good now. Just got super confused. We don't actually need to go back here. Back here is down to this alleyway. Wait, is the pharmacy right here? I thought it was here. I mean, we do need to go this way then. Well, I can guess why the pharmacist hasn't delivered the ingredients. There's monsters outside of their pharmacy. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. I just realized you're a boss. H.G. Griffin. Who the hell are you? That was a nice fight. Felt good. It wasn't super hard, but took a while. Got to really try out my abilities and see just how much blood I can get and how effective this Pruin steak is. And the answer is really damn effective. I remember a while ago I was saying that I'm worried my use of the steak is going to make me never try to parry again. Well, guess what? It made me never try to parry again. It's just too damn effective. It's way too damn effective. Sorry, Dark Souls. I'm just never gonna parry. Dr. Strickland's list. Ordered by Dr. Thoreau Strickland. Pembroke Hospital list of substances. Opium, hypochlorite, potassium, yep. Opium 
is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Yeah, Strickland seems a little bit obsessed with experimenting. Oh, can't even go inside. Yeah, let's check out the whole area while we're here. Oh, it's a shortcut. Look at that. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way here to the bridge. That's cool. There's a lot of shortcuts. Do I want to go down there? Uh, that will take me around there. I mean... Eh? Ah, unbreakable. Alright, let's drop down. was the train up there? That's what I was hearing. And then we're back to where we started. Has to open from this side. Limehouse dock. Ooh, another train? No, oh, I can't see it. I can only see the smoke. Oh yeah, I remember this place when we were trying to run away from everything. I remember looking for the boat that I needed around here and it wasn't here, it was over here. What's this? Cover letter. Hello Frank, how are you my old friend? It was good to see you last week. Next time, let me get the rounds in. I hope everything is okay on your side of town. Here in our old neighborhood, the situation is getting worse. Clay is getting more violent every day. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. I killed him. Remember, that was the leader of the Wet Boot Boys. And is only thinking about expansion, even when it seems there's some new players around. Trying to dispute our territory. The wet boot, boy, wet boot Boys are in a bad spot, I'm afraid, so I thought about what you said last time we met, that you never regretted leaving the gang. That the only thing you regret is never being able to put foot in the East End again, to avoid a good beating, or worse. Well, rest assured that you'd have my protection if you decide to pass by. And maybe we could talk again about new opportunities or a job offer. You know I've always been good with numbers, so maybe if you need an accountant in your company? Let's talk about that, shall we? Say hello to your wife for me. What boys for life, old chap? Booth Digby. Oh, no hint for Booth Digby. I guess I'll actually get to meet them at some point. You're Booth Digby, aren't you? Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Oh, they're level four. Shit. Good amount of XP. I know you're looking for an honest job, Booth. You're tired of this criminal life, aren't you? It's just an idea. Edwina loves to run things so much. You can never really leave the gang. Wet boys for life, you know? <laughs> yep, wet boys for life. <laughs> Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? 
So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. I'm gonna come back when I've got mesmerized level 4 and I'm gonna bite ya. So, tell me about your gang then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, alright? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weena says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Yeah, Edwina is... There we go, Edwina Cox. Yeah, Edwina is, uh, was married to... What was it, Clay Cox? The person we killed. And I'm pretty sure that Clay Cox was the leader of the Wet Boot Boys, so I'm guessing Edwina, who I know is in the business as well, is, I mean, maybe, I don't know who the hell the leaders are, right? Like, this person says they're the leader of the Wet Boot Boys, but I thought it was Clay, and then it sounded like his wife, Edwina, was also high up, so maybe they're kind of both co-owners, or so, I don't know. I don't know how gangs work. Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cat. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Goodbye, Mr. Dickman. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to find people to actually talk to, like a safe zone. I don't think it's super... Yeah, there's no obvious um, indication when you're in a safe zone, but in safe zones you can't take out any weapons, basically. Yeah, I can't take out my weapon, I can't do the, the like, teleport forward stash thing. Most of the areas you can talk to people in. Oh shit, there's a wiener right there. Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I don't have any money for you leeches. I'm not here for charity, miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? Level 5, yeah, I figured they'd be pretty high. Healthy, 3000 XP, wow. Who Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes? Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. Doesn't surprise me that Clay Cox wasn't the best husband, being a complete piece of shit. I'm not that easily shocked, Miss Cox. You can speak freely about your lover, if you so wish. The poor bastard is good to me, if you must know. He makes me feel good. And that's a first. So you're just like any other couple, after all, are you not? Yeah, we're so ordinary that I'd put a bullet in his head if he ever cheated on me. Don't worry, I'm gonna kill them both in due time. Tell me about your work. 
<laughs> it's such a weird thing. Just go up to one of the heads of the Wet Boot Boys criminal gang and just like, tell me about your work. How was your day? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things, and I send my Wet Boot Boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. You still use your husband's name, Edwina. Why is that? Why shouldn't I? He may be a bloody bastard, but I'm still his wife and his name means something round here. Are you aware of what happened to him? Yes. I'm sure he fought till the end and looked deaf in the eyes. The boys will mourn him. Except one of them, maybe. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so it, it looks like if you kill somebody, people do know. I mean, Edwina knows, and um, after I killed Milton... Milton Hooks, was it? Milton Hooks? Milton Brooks? Um, Pippa Hawkins obviously knew and ran away. So word spreads the day after, it seems like. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard, but he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway. No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory and this is our law. Gotta keep the boys wet. Tell me about. Can I see what you have? As long as. You what do you have? I've got a bit of money. So I don't need things like screws and grease and ammo, but I definitely could use things like handle parts. Be used to upgrade weapons. I think. I think a tiny common handle part. I think I need one more to upgrade my Pruin stake. So let's grab one of that. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Good evening. Uh I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mucked or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say. Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them, they must know something. Goodbye, Miss... I think we have some new hints to talk to this dude about. You. Do you know Edwina suspects you to be unfaithful? Edwina's the one who asked to be called Mrs. Cox, even though Clay hadn't touched her for such a long time. You have not answered my question. She's a passionate woman. I've no doubt she'll shoot me down if I ever betray her, but that's not going to happen. I love her as she is. Tell me about the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. I think you're wrong. Maybe the docks have always been violent. But you can't say the living don't suffer because of it. And then what? Let the commies and the anarchists rule? Nah. We're the wet boot boys. Our fathers died on these docks and they belong to us. Can't wait to kill you all. Goodbye. Oh, right. I remember this place. This. These murders are the work of a vampire. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? I'm a tracker of these creatures. A vampire hunter. <laughs> you best be off to your hunting then. For if the sewer dog is back, 
and hunting all these poor folk, he needs a catching. A sewer dog? What's it look like? It's an old story. A monster with daggers for teeth and icy claws. He comes of a sudden, night time, claiming innocence, then vanishes. Teeth? Claws? Murders by night? Your sewer dog is my business. He's the kind of prey I hunt, m'lady. This douchebag is such a blowhard. Not a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmort, <laughs> vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? Really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist, and they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. <laughs> yes, they are close, Throgmorton. The vampires are close. <laughs> look, at, look at Jonathan's fucking face. You're a vampire hunter, and you don't think, hmm, something's up. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Oh, boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night. Investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but people are careless. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. And they also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. Am I going to be actually doing that? Because I probably shouldn't. Like, just for self-preservation, you know? Have you heard of the Guard of Prewan? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> Were you ever tempted to join the Guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds risky. Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. I'm curious. You know how you get a little monologue about their death after you uh, bite them, embrace them? What would this person's monologue be? I have a feeling it'd be really funny. Obviously can't though, they're level 4. I don't think I'd want to kill them anyway. Maybe? They're kind of a threat to me, but they're more of a blowhard than anything. I don't think they're really any harm. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour. But I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. 
I'm sure your intentions are good. They're not. People who sleep there, they have plenty of reasons to hide. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. I believe they will remember me. We've spoken before. Although this time I'm not covered in blood. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss, and I'm much older and all. But I like her, for sure. What is bothering you, then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. It hurts to see her like that. Can I make sure they don't get together, because you are much older and their boss? How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. And with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? <laughs> I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Almost as important as saving lives, right? I like how when NPCs give you quests to do and most of them are ridiculously outside of like my skill set as a doctor or a vampire i like how jonathan puts up like a little bit of uh, like a fight a little bit of annoyance like you want me to run errands and they're like no i just want you to and then proceeds to run errands anyway i mean it kind of like it makes sense i suppose could you really get a bunch of quests from a bunch of npcs that would all be specifically tailored to a doctor's skill set It'd be pretty damn hard, right? Like, why would a bartender give you a quest related to being a doctor? Unless everybody had it. What if everybody just had, like, broken bones or something and you need to give them the casts? Nah, that'd be kind of weird. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. What can you tell me about this part of town? It's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I'm a little bit confused. Sean Hampton. I seem to, like, they were mugged or something, someone said, and then they left the hospital? I never met them at the hospital, right? I met some dude in Swansea's office. Uh, that was not Sean Hampton, that was something Colum. The important thing is I find him. Quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Ah, okay, so here's the, the full quest. Okay, now this makes sense. So there's no actual connection, really, between um, between Jeffrey McCollum, who was the one doing the argument with Swansea in Swansea's office. They are the leader of the Guard of Prewin. They were the one who... Knew I was a vampire, but, you know, it's like neutral ground didn't attack me, but they were basically 
looking at the Pembroke Hospital as a nest of vampire activities and I guess thinking of doing something about it. And of course, since the hospital had been recently attacked, what I was trying to do is basically make things better, restore the reputation of the hospital. So William Bishop is that person who we saved a long time ago. They're the one who we didn't actually see them do this, but they turned into a... It turned out they had been infected and they turned into a skull and they killed that old lady in the hospital room. And um, because I was the one who let, let them into the hospital, I basically need to deal with it to try to make everybody happier at the hospital, restore their reputation, that sort of thing. Right, so Sean Hampton is a skull. If they are at the if they are at the asylum and the asylum is where people go to get help, then I think everybody there might be dead now. What do you got there? What are you eating? Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. Do I really want to talk to this person? Not really. I'll uh, just see if I get any useful hints and bring you back if anything interesting happens. Whoa. Tribute to the victims, new investigation. I don't even know what I just did. They told a long story about something, but I skipped through the entire thing. All right, cool. Ah, so the investigation is related to why they drink all the time. Apparently, a few years back in the East End docks, a bomb exploded, took all that he cared about. Maybe his family or something, or friends. Claims he started drinking the day after, and now he can't remember where the tragedy occurred to pay his homage to the dead, so I'm supposed to find it, basically, so he can grieve properly. Sabrina, I think I'll actually have a real conversation with. What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. If you're uncertain about your safety here, the docks might not be the right place for you. I've got responsibilities. And it's not like I've got the money to move anywhere else anyway. Can I help you with that? This place seems, how shall I put it, very colourful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. I'm sorry, I just, I'm mesmerized by how good that cigarette smoke looks in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Look at that smoke. That's really good. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's happening with it. I think it's got very fine smoke particles. Oh no, it's going out of view. Let's get it back. I think it's got very fine smoke particles here at the start and I think they fade away and then there's just like bigger smoke particles. But it looks really good in motion. Like, really good. So this bar is neutral territory, then? We already know this. You're yeah. This place seems... We Let's ask them about their boss. Again, I want to keep them apart, but I doubt that's going to be an option. Sabrina, tell me about your true feelings for your boss. I love Tom. Not ashamed of it. Don't care if the customers joke about it, neither. Who's mocking you? I mean, we're always together. People will talk, won't they? Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Knows he. My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London, and here I am. Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. 
She just has to learn to control it. Looks like that's all I can do with them for the moment. Let's go check out this hideout. Wow, that was a particularly shitty looking one. The whole place looks like it's rotting. I have so much ammo. I have 82 bullets, 20 shotgun shells. <laughs> I need to use my guns more. Ah, here we go. Yeah, I was right. I needed one more tiny common handle part to upgrade the Pruin stake. So it's going to go from 23 stun to 28. That is going to be so ridiculously good. It's going to be stunning. And we can decrease stamina consumption by 10%. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we have a bunch to do. We got, I think, three side quests around here, as well as the main quest over here to find Sean Hampton. Put an end to Sean Hampton's savagery.